thanks for joining me. Today I'm just going to talk very quickly about working in ink using the stopper of the bottle. So these are the De La Rowney um, acrylic inks. I think are they FW it says on them somewhere. Yeah, De La Rowney FW. And this is a pearlescent one. So you can get them in all different colours. I, I quite often use the sepia one, particularly with trees. And you'll probably have seen me using them before. So the thing about this is it makes you work quite expressively and loosely because you've not got as much control as you would perhaps like over it. And the other thing that you can do is set yourself a time limit. So use your timer on your phone or whatever and just set a timer for five minutes and do something as quickly as you can and it'll stop you overthinking it and you become much more loose in your work. So I'll put the video on in, in a minute of the one, this one that I did just before. I had two goes at this one, so this is on an A4 sheet here, and I didn't like her leg, it was, wasn't was close enough to her body. Um, so that's so then I had another go on this one, which is a much bigger one, A3, and as you can see, see that's still drying. The ink's dry, but then I decided I would just pop a little bit of brush over the top to give it a bit of colour, so the brush is still drying. So, and I'll show you the video of this one and put that on in a moment. But first of all, we'll just have a look at the ink itself. So it's De La Rowney and this one's pearlescent black. Now you can get all different colours. I do quite often use the sepia one for doing trees and things and I use the black a lot. But these pearlescent ones are quite nice. The only thing you've got to really look out for with the pearlescent ones is they do get a little bit clogged up in the end. So just make sure if you've not used it for a day or two that it's not clogged in the end before you start using it. So if you press the dibber to take up some ink so that it's full and then of course you've got to release it again so you're bound to get accidents and big blobs and things like this every now and again so one way to rescue that is to empty your dibber and suck it up as much as you can and another way will be to get some water very quickly whilst it's still wet some water on your brush and lift it off like that. And this, this is just a practice paper, it just depends on your paper how well it's going to lift off. But you can see you can, if you're quick about it, you can get it off a little bit. But I wouldn't advise keep correcting yourself. So you'll see when I do the drawing afterwards that I'll get a line in the wrong place as I'm drawing and I don't worry about it. I just go to where I think the correct line should be and ignore the line that's wrong and just keep working. Keep looking back at your subject or your reference photo and just keep going with it. Ignore the lines that don't work and, and emphasise the lines that do work um, and then you know add some movement. So the thing about this is look how we've got this lovely changes variety in the line we've got some thick bits there some very thin bits some blobs some you know so it's going to be much more expressive than using a pen oh sorry i'll just get one you know a pen that's all the same uniform line this is much more dramatic okay so that's really the reason for using it and like i say it's a good idea just to set your timer have a big piece of rough paper Set your timer and give yourself just five minutes to get something down really quickly and you'll find you really loosen up your work that way. Um, and the other thing about it is don't be fussy about wasting paper or wasting ink. You won't progress and you won't get uh, as good at drawing in ink as you would like to if, you, if you're hung up on wasting paper and things because you need to practice and you need to work quite quickly to get that expression and that movement. Okay, so thanks for watching. Enjoy this little video. So it's just me quickly sketching um, this one that I've done on this mixed media paper. It's the same paper we used last week when we did the poppy. Um, so that's the one from Gearstacker, if that's how you pronounce it. We did the Ink Tense poppy. I've used it a couple of times since. I do quite like it, but it's not great for watercolour. It doesn't work you know, like the watercolour papers that I'm used to. I popped some colour onto this skier that I'd done in ink uh, for a workshop I was doing last week and you can see it's not just worked, it cockled quite a bit, it's not just gone as well as I would have liked. It's okay but not great compared to my watercolour paper. 
um, and that was just another one and again that was just using a pen so you haven't got the lines as expressively as these lines that you would get using the dropper of your ink bottle. So I'll put a link to the inks below if you're interested in having a go with them and although it says pearlescent it's only a touch of shea shimmer in it. I don't know if the camera's picking it up but it's very little. It's not. I thought I'd use it because she was a dancer and I thought a little bit of a shine would be quite nice but it's not you know over blingy it's not in your face it's just subtle so that's quite nice okay so have fun with that if you have a go let me know how you get on in the comments below oh I'll sh I should show you this a bit more and just move it it's, it's hard when it's um, still drying I don't want to tip it up but uh, yeah let me know how you get on um, in the comments below and thanks for watching and bye for now